Hi, and welcome to your first official math lesson using our new curriculum. We're going to be using Open Up Resources. All of these resources are available online, and they're also already available to you imported into Canvas. Um, a few things to note that we already mentioned in our last video, but I want to make sure that you remember. Uh, this is 8.1.18 8 because you are in grade 8. That first point one deals with the unit, and the second deals with the lesson. So unit one, lesson one, is 8.1.1. We're not skipping ahead to unit eight. Eight comes from the grade level. So when you're looking in Canvas, as you already saw, it is listed as unit one, but below that you can see 8.1, because that is unit eight. Let me try that again. That is math eight, unit one, and here is lesson one, moving in the plane. You already clicked on this. And your screen is going to look a little bit different because the video is going to be right here. I'm making the video and then it's going to be embedded right in here. Um, and then you will see all of the lesson down below it. Now it's going to be difficult to kind of follow along with the lesson while the video is up there playing. So it might be good to kind of push that out into a window of its own, viewing it through YouTube um, and then just being able to look through the lesson here. Another option is to keep it embedded and view the embedded video, but then print off that resource. So again, it just depends on what resources you also have available at home, um, but know that that PDF is available to you. Um, if you're looking for that PDF, remember you're going to find it here on the home screen, scrolling down until you get to the Unit 1 Tasks and Practice. So if you're looking to print this off and take notes the same way that we do in class, this is where you're going to find it. It opens up to that OneDrive folder and you're going to want that 8, because that's Math 8 1.1, that's the Unit 1 Lesson 1, so that's the one that we're going to be looking at today. Um, if you're looking at this, it's going to look really similar with just a few kind of differences, um, but I think that you'll be able to figure it out. And if you're having troubles, just make sure that you remember to email me at any point. Um, with that in mind, let's just dive right into this lesson. And we have Unit 1, Lesson 1. We start with this, uh, which I think is actually a really great warm-up. Um, I'm asking which one doesn't belong. Now, in class, in person, we have done a lot of warm-ups like this. This is the first time that you've seen anything like this. Um, so I want you to just take a look at each one of these images, and I want you to think which one doesn't belong. And sure, you might already have your mindset on one of them, but then I want you to kind of see things from a different perspective, and can you now pick a different one and figure out a reason why that one is the one that doesn't belong? And then can you do it again? So if you're really good at this, you can probably find one reason why each one of them doesn't belong. The end result I want you to understand is that there is no right or wrong answer. As long as you can justify your reasons why you think that particular one doesn't belong, then you have answered the question correctly. So pause the video, give yourself enough to think time to figure out which one of these doesn't belong. All right, and we're back. Um, I would love to hear your answers. Unfortunately, with our current circumstances, that makes it a little bit difficult. So here's some reasons that you might have chosen these. Maybe you said A doesn't belong because it's a straight angle. I think that's a great reason why it wouldn't belong. It's the only one that's a straight angle. Some students might mistakenly think that it isn't an angle at all, but it is an angle. If you take a look, you can see that that is a 180 degree angle, and on the other side is another 180 degree angle. Okay, so it is an angle, it's just a straight angle. It's a special kind of angle with 180 degrees. Uh, the next one, maybe you said that B doesn't belong because it's the only one that's a right angle, and I think that's a great observation, and if you justify it that way, you can say it doesn't belong because it's the only one that's a right angle. Uh, C, you could also justify that one saying it doesn't belong because it's the only acute angle. And D, we have a little bit harder time with this one. We can't say it's the only obtuse angle because technically a straight angle is also an obtuse angle because it's greater than 90 degrees. Instead, we could talk about the way that these rays the two lines that form that angle, we could talk about how those rays are the only ones that are pointing to the left. All the others um, have rays that point to the right. This is the only one, one is going down and to the left. None of them are pointing to the right. So that could be uh, why you might have chosen D. Now as we move on, depending on how you are viewing this, I'm moving on to a new screen, maybe you're looking a little bit further down and you're scrolling, maybe you're moving on to the next page, um, but what we're doing here, it's called the triangle square down. 
As we read through the directions here, it starts by saying your teacher will give you three pictures. And then it also reminds us that each shows a different set of dance moves. Now, of course, once again, that is going to look different for you online learners. You will also see that we have this applet available right here. Um, I'll have you click on that in just a second. Um, again, if you're in Canvas, then you can click directly on that link. Um, so I want to show you what that looks like in a second. But it says your teacher will give you three pictures. These are the three pictures that I gave to those in-person students. Okay. And um, before we go into any of the other directions, I want to make sure that you understand what this means. Um, I had some students in class who were really like they were really thrown off and they didn't know how to take a look at these. So A is completely separate from B and B is completely separate from C. They're all completely different. That's why we see that big space between them. So A, we're going to look just at figure A for just a second. And it's like a cartoon or a comic strip. Okay. It's also like basic animation. And I know that you guys have all done these little flip books in your little post-it notes where you draw your little stick figures and it shows that that stick figure as you flip through it is dancing across the page or something like that. And that's kind of the same idea here where each one of these frames is a new post-it note. And so here's the first post-it note and then we would flip and then this is the image on the second post-it note and then we flip and this is the image on the next post-it note and so we're we're kind of scrolling through or flipping through our little flip book. Um, so it's just like a graphic novel and it's just like how we read. We start on the left top and we read across and then when we're done we go down to the new line and we read across and we go down to the new line and we read across. And so that's how we're going to be looking at each one of these. Imagine it like a comic strip um, or a cartoon and each one of them is its own little post-it note. Um, so to help, again, to help you get started and to read through it, I'm going to just go through A, just A with you, just to really make sure that we understand. And it should look something like this. Okay, so we've got our background. Here's my little image. You can see I've, I've, I've tried to keep it just one single piece instead of three separate pieces to make it easier for me. But you can see it starts here in this corner and this is the new position. So you would need to describe how did that move? How did that change? And then we have another move. This time it moves like this. See how the point from that triangle is now in this direction. And then it moves like this. And then it moves like this. And then it moves like that. So you would need to have to describe each one of those moves. Um, if you are struggling with this, then that's when I would encourage you to move to the applet and kind of watch the applet sort of play through so that you can see how it plays instead of trying to uh, watch it like this. So with that in mind, what you're going to do now is it says your teacher um, will give you these three pictures and with your partner, you're going to be doing a certain thing. If you have someone at home that you can do this with, that's great. I think it would be a really great experience for you. But if you don't, it's going to look something like this, where I am going to choose either A, B, or C. I'm going to mentally choose that. I'm not going to tell you guys which one I'm choosing. And then I'm going to use words to describe it. You have to listen and pay attention. You have to try and figure out which one it is that I'm describing. Which set of dance moves? Am I describing A? Am I describing B? Or am I describing C? Um, so that's going to be our first step. And then the next step, I'll give the directions when that happens. So taking a look at this, I kind of showed you what it looked like to move through A. Um, but now I have mentally chosen one of these three dances and I'm going to describe it to you. So listen. Maybe jot some notes down, pay attention, so that you can figure out if I'm describing A, B, or C. So we start in this position and then we move to the right. From that, we turn to the left. After we turn to the left, then we move to the left. Then we move up. After we move up, then we turn to the right. Have you figured out which dance move I described? I described dance move C. So this is the square dance that I chose. And again, at this point, normally we would have you switch roles and with your partner, someone would pick a new dance move and you would have to be the one to describe it or listen versus depending on your role. Um, so if you do have family members at home that can help you out, then give that a try. Um, otherwise, I just want you to describe it yourself. Use words, describe it out loud and write it down. Pause the video so that you have enough time to get that done. All right, so I have opened up the applet. Um, what I did is I 
I'm going to show you Dancy since that's the one that I described. Um, I have opened up the applet and it looks like this. And you can just click play and see it move through instead of having to read through that cartoon image. So that kind of helps. Um, if you want to watch that and describe it, writing it down on your paper, um, then that would be great. That's kind of a good substitution there um, since you don't have a partner. So it's pretty cool to see how it moves. And vis seeing it like that really just uh, helps us get a mental picture of what's happening. So that's the applet. All right, back to our lesson. Um, what you're going to be seeing now is I've got those same dance moves because what I want you to do for this next step is answer question three. It says with your partner, but you can do this on your own, um, write a description of the moves in each dance. Um, so we'll just do like an A, B, C here in the space that's provided. Um, if you want to just type it in, you're not turning it in. I just want you to be able to like t translate it from what you saw, uh, verbalize it, and now be able to write it down. So write a description of each one of those moves. I'm going to be writing it here. So here I've got the visual of A, I've got the visual of B, and I've got the visual of C. And below it, that's where I've typed in the answers. Um, and I know you don't have that visual, but in that space for number three, that's where I want you to do that writing. So pause the video um, long enough for you to really make sure that you've written it down. A, what are the steps? B, what are the steps? C, what are those steps? And again, we're saying to go from step one to step two, what do they do? Step two to step three, what is the move that's being made? Um, pause the video to write those down. We'll come back in a second with the answers. Okay, so for our first move, what I have is, there we go, uh, we start, this is just the starting position, nothing's really happening yet, but to go from here to here, we move to the right, and then to move from this uh, square to this square, we turned to the right. From there, we just moved up. Then we move to the left, that's how I got to this position, and then I turned it to the left so that my triangle is facing back that way again. Um, if you have the same ideas but maybe different words, that's okay. You don't have to write specifically move or turn, um, but I just want those same ideas to be communicated there. The next one for part B, um, we again, starting position, then we slid to the right, then I turned to the right to make that facing the same direction, and then I move to the left, then I shifted up, and then I turned back to the left. Again, if you have different words like slide, shift, twist, turn, um, that's completely fine, but I want you to notice that I'm starting to sort of formalize this vocabulary a little bit as I show you the answers here. I used to say move, and now I'm saying slide or shift, because I want to be able to identify what kind of a move is it. Um, and when we're turning, that's a different move than if I'm just sliding that, that figure. Um, and now you'll see some really more formalized vocabulary. And I do want you to start getting to this point. Um, but as we progress throughout the unit, that's what you're going to see happening. So here I have, we started, we slid to the right, so slide right. Then we turn, and I'm not just saying turn left, I say turn 90 degrees counterclockwise. So envision the hands of a clock and the way that they move. The hands of the clock move, and that is clockwise. But when they move in the opposite direction of the hands of a clock, that is counterclockwise. And this moved in the opposite direction of the clock, and so I turned not just counterclockwise, but I also put 90 degrees. So I was able to identify that angle that it moved as well. Um, then we slid to the left, so slide left, slide up, and then turn 90 degrees clockwise. So I really started to formalize that vocabulary just a little bit more. And we are now to the point where are you ready for more? What I want you to do now is I'll leave it on this screen when I pause the video, so I'll leave it here but I want to continue on with the directions. Um, pick a dance and describe the words in reverse order. So what if the dance started in the sixth frame and then it moved backwards all the way back to that very first frame? So again, what if it started here and it moved backwards this way? What would that dance be like? So just pick one. You don't have to do it for all of them, but pick one 
and um, do it in reverse order. And then I want you to think, how do the directions for running your dance in the forward direction and the reverse direction, how do they compare? Are they similar? Are they different? Um, so think about that. I'm not going to go over the answers on this one. This is the Are You Ready For More is just kind of a chance for you to extend your learning, to really get that brain working really hard. Um, if you're short on time or you just don't want to do it, that's okay. But for those who really want to get to that honors level, those of you who really want to have a really in-depth knowledge, this question is for you. Um, moving on, and it's time for our lesson summary. And it says, here are two ways for changing the position of a figure in a plane without changing its shape or size. That's actually really important that we are changing the position of a figure, but we're not changing its shape or size. Um, the first one is a slide or a shift. We can slide or shift that figure without turning it. Um, shifting figure A to the right and up puts it in the position of figure B. So again, we're going to the right and up, and we shifted or slid, slid that figure. Uh, the next move that we saw with our dance moves is turning or rotating a figure around a point. So turning or rotating a figure around a point. So figure A was rotated around the bottom vertex to create figure C. So that means we just kind of put our finger here, and we spun it around until it landed in position C. Um, and that is your summary. Now let's just make sure that we all understand what we did today. Here's your cool down. Um, again, this is like reading the images of a cartoon, reading through those frames. Frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four, and I want you to describe how those things are moving. So how are we moving from frame one to frame two? I'm just gonna go through these right now, but again, I want you to pause the video and go through them on your own first and then continue the video just to check your answers. So pause the video now, cause I'm gonna start showing those answers. Frame one to frame two, it looks like all we did is we shifted down. Notice that I am using that new vocabulary, shift or slide instead of just move. We shifted down. And to go from frame two to frame three, we are rotating. You can still say turn, that's okay. But we're rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise. And from figure or frame three to frame four, we slid up, so slide up. Again, I'm just trying to use that new, a little bit more formal vocabulary than just move, using words like shift, slide, turn, or rotate are pretty good words to use. And that's it for your lesson. So what you're going to see now, if you printed off that packet, the rest of that packet are practice problems. And practice problems mean that's your homework, that's your assignment, that's what you're getting credit for. So everything up to this point has been the video, that's your learning experience, and now you have to practice it with these practice problems, which you'll be turning in for credit. So online uh, learners, what you're going to do is you're going to go into Canvas. Let me see if I can pull that up. You're going to go into Canvas. And again, it says that it's a quiz, but remember, that's just the way that Canvas programs it. Um, it's not really a quiz, it really is just an assignment, but you'll go in, you'll answer those questions, and it will show you the answers right away. Um, you don't have to redo it if you got them wrong, just do it once, just show me that you're actually trying and you'll be getting full points. As long as you're putting in the effort, you'll be getting the points because my homework assignments are done on completion and not on correctness. So show me that you're giving it a try, correct your own answers, go back and watch any pieces of the video that were confusing to you um, based on what problems you got wrong. Um, if you are doing the packet, if you printed it for yourself and you're doing the packet, you can answer directly on the page and that's fine, but the way that Canvas works, you'll still have to go in and enter your answers on Canvas. So maybe save yourself some work and don't answer them here on the paper, just enter them in Canvas so that you get your credit. Um, I know that this is the first time we've done anything like this, so give me a call. No, don't give me a call. Send me an email if you guys have any questions. Um, you can call the school if you need to, but just uh, send me an email if you have any questions. And I think that's it. Uh, hopefully this works out for everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye!